Hi everyone, welcome to our local prayer meeting. Welcome po sa Victory Kalimbao. We are so glad that you could join us tonight. And I hope that you are okay. Sana po wala pong merong may sakit sa atin. And I'm praying na we will be protected by God from COVID-19. And let me encourage you with the word of God tonight. In 2 Chronicles 20 verse 10 to 15, I'm going to read five verses, but we're going to look at one story tonight. And this was a story of Jehoshaphat. In verse 10, it says here, And now, behold, the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came from the land of Egypt, and whom they avoided and did not destroy, behold, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we were powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Meanwhile, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jaziel, the son of Zechariah, son of Baniah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. He said, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. It's so encouraging that towards that last verse, sabi doon, Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours. But God's. Why don't we all bow our heads for a moment and pray? Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence freely as sons and daughters. And though we may not see each other face to face as of this moment, we gather here in your name. Salamat Panginoon that we have access to you, that we can pray to you, we can pray together, we can listen to your word, we can understand your word. Holy Spirit, my prayer is that you would help us tonight, not just to understand, but really to, uh, really for the Word of God to change our hearts, change our posture towards uh, the crisis we are facing right now. Panginoon, dalahin ko po na baguhin mo po yung buhay namin as we listen to your Word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let me give you a little background of the story. This was the story of Jehoshaphat the fourth king of the divided kingdom, Israel and Judah. Uh, he reigned around 850 to 875 BC. And he was considered as one of the most zealous king na meron in Judah. Zealous in obeying God, zealous in obeying his commandments. And kumbaga, this is a model king. Okay po ito na leader. But at the same time, dito po sa kwento natin, the nations surrounding him suddenly attacked him. The Moabites, the Ammonites, the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. The armies of Moabites, Ammonites, and Meunites, of course, dahil tatlo yung kingdom nila, mas marami po sa Israelites or dun sa Judah nung time na yun. Pero dahil divided na yung kingdom at saka dahil naturally mas malalaki po itong armies na to, medyo nakakatakot kung ikaw yung nasa lagay ni Jehoshaphat, to be attacked by three separate kingdoms uniting and waging war against your nation. Now, in short, Jehoshaphat was in trouble. Medyo malaki yung problema ni Jehoshaphat. And rightfully so, kahit man sino yung dumaan dito sa ganitong uh, dilemma or ganitong problem, medyo makakaramdam na ng takot. So, yun po yung nararamdaman ni Jehoshaphat. And I realized na pagka binasa mo yung buong kwento, medyo nananahimik lang naman si Jehoshaphat. Ano bang ginawa niya? Pero bigla siyang inatake nitong, nitong tatlong army na ito. Itong great horde of an enemy. And realize that sometimes you don't choose your battles. Sometimes the battle chooses you. I mean, who would have thought na sisimula natin ng 2020 na ito yung pagdadaanan natin? Uh, I don't know about you, pero after nung taal feeling ko, yun ay pinakamalaking problema na pagdadaanan natin. Only to find out na meron pa palang COVID-19 na mas matindi. And even up to now, hindi pa rin ako makapaniwala sa 
mga nangyayari that when I go out, parang ano, no? parang zombie apocalypse. Parang pagkatinignan mo yung ano, pagkatinignan mo yung mga grocery store, ang haba ng pila, kapag ka, tinignan mo yung roads, walang laman, or at least the some parts of Kalamba. And hindi ko, ala, hindi ko akalain na pagdadaanan natin tong battle na pinagdadaanan natin ngayon. Uh, probably, ganun din yung nararamdaman mo. Parang wala sa ating nag-aakala na pagdadaanan pala natin to. And I realized that even if hindi natin pinagdadaanan yung COVID-19, every one of us, we all experience battles. And for most of the battles that we experience, it's not that we choose our battle, it's that the battle chooses us. But how do we respond to that? Paano ba tayo nagre-respond kapag ka meron ng battles, especially kapag ka yung battle na dumadating sa atin is something that we cannot control, it's something that we cannot really run away from, uh, especially if it's something that is so big that we know that when we face it, we are powerless against it. Thinking about it, tung kaharap natin ngayon, yung COVID-19, we cannot even see the virus. But the virus is deadly, the virus is real, the virus is serious, the virus is highly communicable. So, mabilis makahawa. So, paano natin lalabanan yung ganito? Uh, the other day, um, I had the chance to pray for the frontliner, so yung mga police dito sa Kalamba. Uh, I'm with a friend, a retired general. Tapos sabi niya dun sa ano, dun sa mga police, uh, he, uh, sabi niya, I did my time. Kung baga, dumaan ako dun sa ano, dun sa duty ko na may mga na-experience akong gera. And sa totoo lang, mas gusto ko yun kasi yung mga kalaban ko dun, kaya ko labanan. Yung, yung kalaban natin ngayon, hindi natin nakikita. And that is so true. What we are facing right now is serious. What we are facing right now is really an enemy that we cannot see. And if we think about it, it seems that like we are powerless against this great enemy. Now, pagka ganito na narealize natin yung ating pagiging powerless, it's so easy to lose hope. And napag-usapan nga natin, uh, kapag ka nawala na yung hope mo, para ano pa yung sense, di ba? Parang ano pa yung ilulok forward natin. And I realize, and my question is, how do we respond to challenges like this? Or how do we have hope in the midst of great crisis? And I have three things based dun sa story natin, ni Joe, sapat na pag-uusapan natin tonight. And number one is we can have hope because of who our God is. We can have hope because of who our God is. Second Chronicles 20 verse 6, it says here, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations, and in your hand are power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you. Isn't it interesting that in the face of great trials, ito yung kanilang declaration. O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? Dito pa lang sa verse na to, ang dami nang nasabi tungkol kay God. Unang-una sabi dito, the God of our fathers, meaning the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Adam and Eve, the God of Noah, the God of Moses. And kapag ka, ang implication on is He is the God of history. The same God who fought for Moses, the same God who fought for Abraham, the same God who did miracles back then is the same God who is going to deliver them. Ganon yung declaration. And that is true even up to us right now. Sometimes it's so easy to forget who our, our God is kasi ang laki nga naman ng problema. May tama sa ekonomiya, may tama sa health, may tama dun sa finances natin, may tama even dun sa relationship natin, and minsan sa emotion pa natin. So how can we believe God sa gitna ng mga pinagdadaan natin? We declare who our God is. The God of our fathers. Sabi rin dito, the God who lives in heaven. Therefore, He is above all things. He is above COVID-19. He is above poverty. He is above everything that the enemy can throw at us. He lives in heaven. 
He is also the ruler of nations. Nabanggit dito, he rule over all kingdoms of the nations. Therefore, he is sovereign. We might not like what's happening sa kung anong dito sa ating mundo ngayon or even sa ating bansa. Pero we have to remember that who we serve, our God, is the sovereign God. All authority is on Him. And finally, He is all-powerful. Sabi dito, in your hand are power and might so that no one is able to withstand you. Makapangyarihan po yung Diyos na pinagpipraya natin. The reason why we are praying is, is not because we're doing something para itwist yung army God. No. The reason why we have faith and what the reason why we are praying to God is say we believe that He is powerful enough to defeat the enemy that we're facing right now. Now, this is my question to you. Who is God to you? Sino nga ba ang Panginoon sa buhay mo? It is one thing to say that God is our healer, our protector, our refuge, our fortress, but it's another thing to, for it to be tested. And itong ganitong panahon, itong crisis na pinagdadaanan natin, our faith o yung pagkakakilala natin sa Panginoon is being tested. So dito natin malalaman, hindi na lang natin basta masasabi, God is my provider, pero pagka nandiyan naman yung challenge, we tend to worry. This time, pag sinabi natin, God is my provider, dun matitest, do you really believe that God is your provider? Do you really believe that God is your refuge and your strength? Kilala nga ba natin yung sinasamba nating Diyos? Because if we don't, how can we have hope in Him? Number two, we can have hope because of what our God has done. Ano nga ba yung ginawa na ng ating Panginoon? 2 Chronicles 20 verse 7 says here, Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? Isn't it interesting na sa gitna ng malaking challenge, sa gitna ng malaking problema, ang declaration nila King Josaphat is di ba ikaw, ito yung ginawa mo sa amin in the past. Di ba kaya mo tong mga to? Di ba noon nga ito yung ginawa mo? So it's as if ang declaration ay di ba ginawa mo na to noon? So paano pa ngayon? I want to remind you of God's faithfulness. Of course, you can see it in the Bible. Makikita mo how he fought for his people. His faithfulness nung sa time pa lang ni Abraham, ni Isaac, ni Jacob, even sa time ni Noah, ni Joshua. You can see it in the Bible. Pero I implore you, look at your life. Look at what God had done, even in our church. Di ba nang faithful naman talaga si Lord? Di ba itinawid niya tayo nung taal? Di ba itinawid niya tayo nung 2019 nung nag-building project tayo? Di ba itinawid niya tayo nung galing tayo dun sa Milan? Di ba itinawid niya tayo nung naniniwala tayo na may kaya siyang gawin para sa simbahan natin? Di ba tinawid niya tayo o tinawid ka niya nung binago ka niya? If God did that in the past, how much more today? Ano yung difference? God, if God did that in the past, like God can do it they. Amen? So, because they knew God and they knew what God did for them, they sought God. In verse 12, sabi dito, Oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Hindi namin alam kung anong gagawin namin, pero nakatingin kami sa iyo. What a great attitude. What a great posture. Hindi namin alam, pero nakatingin kami sa'yo. They are seeking God. Pangalawa, in verse 19, we can see here, And the Levites and the Koharites and the Koratites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Imagine, in the face of challenge, in the face of a great enemy, their response is a loud voice. A loud voice of worship and praise. Imagine that. And 
Ito pa, they put their trust in God. In verse 20, it says here, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe in His prophets, and you will succeed. What a great declaration. Na in the midst of a great challenge, in the midst of a great crisis that is coming on them, and their life is in danger, Jehoshaphat, their leader, stood up and said, Believe God. I want to say that to you right now. I know it doesn't look good pag tuming ka sa labas. I'm not saying deny the facts. No, the facts, nandyan yan. Totoo, dumadami yung may COVID. Totoo, hindi, hindi madali yung pinagdadaanan natin. But at the same time, I want to say to you, believe God. Amen? And verse 21, they gave thanks to God. Sabi dito, and when they had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in the holy attire as they went before the army and say, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. Can you imagine that? May gera, tapos yung papasugurin mo, ito yung sinasabi. Napanood niyo na ba yung, ano, yung 300? Di ba kapag kagigera sila? Ba? What is your profession? Oh, may, may cheer? Imagine mo yung frontliner nila. Ito yung, ito yung declaration. Ang declaration nila, Give thanks to the Lord for His steadfast love endures forever. Now, it's one thing to thank God kapag tapos na yung problema. It's another thing to thank God sa harap ng problema. What an amazing faith! Nakatingin nila sa problema, tapos ang declaration nila, give thanks to God for His steadfast love endures forever. Can we do that? Game panahon na to, can we do that in our situation? I mean, we, can we stare at our situation in the face and in the midst of lack, in the midst of great problems, titingin tayo doon, Pero at the same time, we're gonna look at that problem with the eyes of faith and we're gonna declare, give thanks to the Lord for His love or His steadfast love endures forever. What an amazing faith. I pray that as we know God more, even in the season of quarantine, we will have this kind of faith. Isa po sa mga advantage ng enhanced community quarantine is it's gonna give us time to seek God. And I hope that we are seeking God. We are praying to Him. We are reading His Word. We're trying our best to every day record a daily devotional para sa ating church, dun sa ating Victory Online groups. I hope that you are watching that, meditating on the Word. It's very important. What do we do in the face of oppositions? Do we run? Do we panic? Do we worry? Or could it be that in the midst of opposition, there's an alternative? We can seek God, we can praise God, we can put our faith in Him, and we can give thanks to Him because His steadfast love endures forever. I want to encourage you, the Lord has done so many good things for us as a church, and I know He has done so much para sa you personally. And this time, it's not gonna be different. Kung itinawid ka ng Panginoon noon, itatawid ka niya ngayon. Amen? And finally, number three, we can have hope because of what our God will do. Galing, no? We can, we can have hope because of who God is. We can have hope because of what our God has done. This time, we can have hope because of what our God will do. Kasi hindi Pa tapos si Lord. In verse 15, it says here, And he said, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed as this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. What a great statement. And I believe that this is God's word for us tonight. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde. For the battle is not yours, but God's. And this is what happened. In verse 16, tomorrow you will go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz. 
and you will find him at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. Tomorrow you go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. What's interesting is in this statement, uh, the prophet said, or the, the Levite said, you will not need to, uh, hindi mo kailangan lumaban, pero at the same time, he said, stand firm and hold your position. Could it be that at the season of a crisis, kung saan meron tayong kinakaharap na great enemy in the form of a virus, na the Lord will fight the battle for us, but at the same time, we are being called by God to hold our position and see the Lord, see the salvation of the Lord on our behalf. Could it be that the Lord is calling us, yes, not to fight the virus head on kasi hindi naman tayo mananalo, di nga natin kita. Pero there's a, there's a posture that the Lord wants us to take. Posture of standing firm and holding our position. What does that mean for us? Ba, alam mo yung panghawakan mo yung pananampalataya mo. Stand firm, hold your position. Be on your guard. Be watchful. Manalangin pa rin tayo. And what's interesting is the people of Judah did not know what would happen tayo. Alam natin, isa alam natin yung kwento. But they do not know, but they trusted in God. In our story, dito sa pinagdadaanan natin yun, we do not know what will happen. Will this end in the next few weeks? Will this end in the next few months? May invento na ba yung vaccine? Natatapos na ba yung enhanced community quarantine? Ano na itsura ng buhay natin pagtasin lahat? I'm telling you, we do not know. But we choose to put our faith in God. We choose to trust God. Amen? Second Chronicles 20.30 So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for as God gave him rest all around. He experienced victory. What a great picture. There will come a time na ma-experience din natin. Yung, I could only imagine yung time na ibabalita na yung huling COVID patient sa Pilipinas gumaling na. Could only hope for that. Look forward in the future and believe God that it will happen. With minimum casualties, Praying for that. Pero at the midst of the opposition, at the face of an unseen enemy, I'm choosing to trust God. Because of who God is, what He has done, and what He is willing to do for us, we can have hope with what's happening all around us. Amen? And as I close, say end this message. As we face this virus na hinaharap natin ngayon, tong tong great unknown, di natin alam eh kung ano yung mangyayari. Di natin alam kung kailan tayo makapag-meet ulit. At the same time, on top of this, meron pa tayong mga hinaharap na challenges sa ating family sa ating finances, with, with, with all of those things. Let's make this personal sa lahat ng may pinagdadaanan ngayon, which is, well, all of us. Imagine the emotions of this verse. In verse 12, it says here, O our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is come against us. What? What, what a great example of humility. Pa yung sinabi niya, we do not know what to do, but our eyes on you. I hope that we will have this posture. Kasi in reality, I cannot tell you what to do, 
because I don't know what to do. One thing I know, that when I don't know what to do, I can choose to look to God. And I hope that you do that, do that as well. Amen? If you ever feel powerless in the face of great opposition, you can always look to God. After all, kagaya nga nung sinelebrate natin last Sunday, the Resurrection Sunday, Jesus already defeated the greatest enemy ever, which is sin and death. How much more COVID-19? How much more every opposition that we are facing right now? God did it before. God will do it now. Amen? Can we all bow it and pray? Father, we thank you for your word. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, for we can have hope in you. Lord, here we are. Our declarations, we do not know what to do. With our current situation, with our finances, with what's happening in the economy, Lord, we do not know what to do. But our eyes are on you. Lord, I pray that the same way that you have fought for your people in the past, Lord, may we see right now how you fight for us. Panginoon, salamat, salamat. We put our faith in you. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every person who is facing a great trial, a great opposition right now on top of what we are facing as a nation. Pray that you would strengthen them. Pray that you would give them hope. At the same time, Lord, I pray that you would give them discernment to be able to see what you are doing. To be able to see what, what you are doing beyond what we see in the physical realm. Salamat, Panginoon. May your grace be upon your people tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.